as I look across the room, I suspect, no, make that, I'm almost 99% sure that most of you came from somewhere else. Yeah. It's not unusual. Since Tucson's beginning, since its colonial days in the 1800s, since its presidio establishment right here in this almost very spot, people have come across, people have come to Tucson from across the world. And of course, it's the country. They came here to work. They came here for health or to get healthy. They came here because they followed someone that they had fallen in love with. Or they came for no reason. Or maybe they came through Tucson, stopped here, had a meal, had a flat tire, <laughs> and were immediately filled with that intoxicating Tucson. The aroma, the smell, the sights, the mountains, the desert, the magic that we love about Tucson. However, unlike you, I was born here, which makes me a rare person. <laughs> and what makes me even rarer is that I chose to leave and I chose to return. This is my story. My mother was born in Tucson which makes her even rare. <laughs> My father is a Mexican immigrant who came here for a job, which in Tucson is very typical. We are an immigrant community. I am one of four siblings. We grew up on the west side, downtown. Welcome to my hood. <laughs> we lived in a very close-knit, Mexican-American community, which I like to call my Chicano cultural cocoon. It nurtured me. It helped me grow. We ate tamales in the summer. We ate tamales at Christmas time. <laughs> and at Thanksgiving, we had turkey. <laughs> and maybe some tamales. We heard Spanish spoken at home in the neighborhood, at school, in the parks. And we tried to speak Spanish. And when we had to speak Spanish to my immigrant grandmother and aunts, we made a go of it. We also learned Spanish going to Dolcine Plaza on Congress Street, where the movies of Mexico were shown, the movies of Cantinflas or Pedro Infante, and all those beautiful rancheros and rancheras. We shopped in the old barrio downtown. We went to the markets owned by Chinese grocers or Garcia's cleaners. My dentist was on Main Street, Dr. Floyd Thompson, Tucson's first African-American dentist, who practiced in the barrio because he could not practice elsewhere in Tucson. But in the late 60s, that barrio was torn apart. The heart of Tucson, the Mexican, Mexican-American, Chicano heart of Tucson was torn out. In high school and in college, I began to appreciate Tucson more. My mother would wax nostalgic about the Tucson that she grew up in before the war and after the war. That would be World War II. My father who came to Tucson in 1954, who arrived on the Greyhound bus and got off at the old Greyhound station where the Pancho Villa statue now stands, talked constantly about how he immediately fell in love with Tucson, with the mountains, with the air, with its people. He had become a well-known Spanish language broadcaster. Music was a big part of my life growing up in Tucson primarily Mexican music, but all forms of music later. This is the Tucson that created me. I also began to appreciate the mountains and the desert. My parents would, when we, when we could, go to Sabino Canyon for a picnic, go to Mount Lemmon for more picnics. 
Or my father would take us to the old ranchos out where Sawarita and the mines are today to see how the old ranchers lived and the joy and the love that they had for the land. This was the Tucson that I was growing to love. But I was grown up now, had to start my job, had to start a career. I wanted to start a career. I wasn't looking to leave Tucson, but opportunity came. It knocked. So I packed up a little Toyota green Celica hatchback with a few things that I had and motored out east, crossed the Midwest Plains into the wooded hills of New England, arrived in, New in Massachusetts on a very cold September day. They told me it was fall. <laughs> I arrived in a little town that was to be my home for the next two and a half years, Fitchburg, Mass, a little north of Worcester, Mass, where the newspaper was located. When I arrived on that very cold September day, it was depressing. It was overcast. It was gray. Houses were boarded up. Storefronts were boarded up. Factories of this old mill town were shuttered. Streets were decrepit. This is where I've come to work and live. Found a motel that first day. Unpacked my car. Sat on the bed and cried. What am I doing here? I asked myself. Is this where I really want to be? Is this what I really want to do? For the next two and a half years, I did. Discovered that I needed to be a journalist, wanted to be a journalist, learned to be a journalist, also learned to appreciate New England and the great diversity of New England. My goodness, people were all over from Europe. Not like Tucson. People were speaking in Polish, in Finnish, were speaking Greek, Romanian, French, Canadian spoken. French, Canadian speak. <laughs> I began to appreciate the natural beauty of New England. There was water in the rivers. <laughs> there was grass. But really, when I began to explore New England, and as much as I was enjoying it, yes, I made comparisons, natural comparisons. When it rained, it didn't smell like Tucson. The woods were beautiful, but they en enclosed me. I could not see past the trees along the, the roads. Where? is that vastness that I was used to. Where are those mountains, those beautiful, majestic mountains? Opportunity knocked again. Packed up that same Toyota Celica, headed west. I stopped in Tucson to say hi and bye to the family. I went to San Diego. Oh, ho, ho, San Diego. Oh, I made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, my family and friends here were jealous of me. San Diego, that temperate climate, that ocean, America's finest city. It was beautiful. Still is. And I was getting to enjoy that beautiful beach and the beautiful weather. But something was gnawing at me. I didn't think San Diego had roots, like Tucson. I certainly was not rooted in San Diego. And while the sunsets were beautiful, they didn't match our sunsets. The mountains around San Diego, far, far, far away. Culture? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, but I was learning, I was growing, 
And I was feeling, do I want to stay? Do I want to go back home? Do I want to go somewhere else? And these questions just stayed with me. And they churned inside my soul, my heart, my head. I wasn't looking to leave. But opportunity knocked again. And I was asked, do you want to come back home? Hmm. You want to come back home to work for the Daily Star, the newspaper that used to throw on the west side. And I thought, I don't know. Do I want to go back home? Do I want to go back home to the city where I was known as Ernesto Portillo Jr., the son of that very well-known popular Spanish language broadcaster? I love my father, but I lived under his shadow for many years. Do I want to go back home to a community that has changed a lot. Much of it for the better, some of it not so much, in my view. Do I want to go back home? And I thought, yes. Yes, I want to go back home. I want to go back home because this is the community that made me. I want to go back home and tell the stories of the people that I grew up with, the people that I knew, and the people that I wanted to come to know and come to learn about and come to appreciate. Because we have grown up, we have become a much more diverse community, which I am so happy about. And yes, I want to go back home and really take advantage of the mountains, of the desert, go camping, go hiking, ride a bike, Yes, I want to come back home, I said. So as I winged, I flew this time. That Toyota Celica was long gone. <laughs> as I approached Tucson and saw those beautiful mountains in that beautiful Spartan desert brown floor, <laughs> I felt, yes, I am home. I'm back home to do what I started out to do. And as I looked out that little portal window in the airplane, I cried. <laughs>